Tom here from Warrant Systems, and is there a flaw in Microsoft Teams that lets people steal authorization tokens out of clear text, or is that clickbait? The answer is yes to both questions. And let me explain. The problem is clickbait is, well, the way you sometimes get people to click on a headline or when Tom's really sitting there reading his phone when he first wakes up in the morning, which is the time I like to flip through the news and maybe not read as in-depth as I should. So I instantly decide to make a video to address this because I think it's an important fundamental for how we think about security and sometimes how we overhype a problem. Sometimes when I'm the one maybe overhyping or at least participating in this bleeping computer article, but let's talk about why it is a security flaw it is a big deal, but it is a big deal that you should be aware of, but the flaw exists in much more than Teams. Teams is a great grabber for the headline, but being able to pull authorization tokens out of clear text from the memory is uh, the way a lot of this stuff just works. So I'm here to raise awareness to how this functions and just kind of do a quick demo and leave some links so you can test this for yourself. Now, for those of you that haven't seen the article, too long, didn't read, here it is. Microsoft Teams stores auth tokens as clear text in Windows, Linux, and Mac. This was published on September 14th of 2022, tweeted by me on September 15th, 2022, early in the morning. Moving on, security analysts have found a severe security vulnerability in the desktop app for Microsoft Teams that gives threat actors access to authentication and accounts with multi-factor authentication turned on. This is the part where we get you engaged and interested because yeah, that would be bad if someone were able to extract those things. But this attack does not require special permissions, not a clickbait title, advanced malware to get away with major internal damage. Well, yeah, you could definitely cause some damage. The problem is upon review, it was determined that these access tokens were active and not an accidental dump of previous. These access tokens gave privileged outlook, safe APIs, blah, blah, blah. More people joining in to get statements to validate all of this. Finally, Vectra developed the exploit by doing an APA call, sending messages to oneself using SQL Aid Engine, you know, all the things you want to do. But this is where things get a little bit broader, and I want people to think about the security topic on this. And because after I posted this right here, uh, Marcus, I believe I say his name, Maciel, I'm not sure, at under Linux, easy to follow, leave a link to this. But he pointed out and was very correct. I'm actually very glad. Thank you, Marcus, for calling me out on this. Uh, it really, you know, because by the way, some people complaining about Microsoft because the dog piling will definitely happen. For people understanding, if you have cookies in session valid, you also don't need MFA in many services. So he, he's a security researcher and did a great job of bringing it up to me, pointing out something I should have seen, obviously. And it's also, I assume there were better browser mitigations against this. And that's because over here under risk mitigation, they do have, while the patches only can be released, here's some recommendations, things to do. For those who can't move to a different solution, they can create a monitoring rule to discover processes, actually in the following directories, etc. And this is where, let's actually show you how it works real quick. So I want to give a technical demo before I do a summary. And we're going to do that using Process Hacker. I'll leave a link to this down below. And I'll also leave a link to just a quick article kind of explaining Process Hacker and how to extract things on memory. And then let's really quickly show you how easy this is to pull something out of, well, Chrome. But insert name of your favorite browser, Firefox, Chrome. All of these are storing certain amounts of things in memory. It's a matter of figuring out where those memory locations are. Now, one thing that was correct is the storing of these in browsers is done a little bit differently. But let's just show you something really quick. Now, we're going to log into my forums and we're some user at someuser.com. We have our super secret password.com. And what we're going to do is just, you know, paste that right in. And we're going to click login. Oh, wait, that one doesn't work. But where was that information put? We're going to find it in Process Explorer by going to Filter for Chrome, double click. We're going to go over to the memory here. We're going to switch to strings, hit OK. We're going to filter for contains this. Oh, look. Now, relating this directly back is a little hard because you don't really have anything more than a bunch of different places and memory addresses where this piece of information was stored. But you can see it's in there. And this is where the details matter and they get a little bit convoluted. The Chromium browser, which is what the base is for Google Chrome, Edge, and a few others, does have some obfuscation techniques. I didn't dive into every detail of them. So while yes, your usernames or tokens may be stored within memory, they're not exactly going to be really easy to get. Kind of the flaw as I understand it, and you know, there's still something to be thought about here with it teams. There's a lot going on in a browser. I'm logged into, well, at any given time, at least 20 different websites. So are many of you, if not more. 
But those auth tokens, because you authorize them, they held the token, and they allow you to browse these different pages or use these different online services, your 2FA bypass is a serious concern there because, well, I can't get your 2FA. You're using insert name of whatever 2FA you're using, but your session token that says you're logged in, that session token, that whole system, if that can be pulled, extracted, understood, and then used in another browser, that would make you look like you're logged in that browser. Where I do see a little bit of a problem is when you use separated apps. And this is actually even for things like Slack. I use that in a browser, not as a separate Electron app or Teams if you're using it. And I don't really use Teams much, but when I do, I do my conversations within the browser. I do it all in a browser rather than Electron app because targeting an Electron app, because it's a separate app that's kind of like a browser wrapped into something that looks like an app, the problem you're gonna to run to using that is it's a target. I know exactly what tokens are in Chrome is a large attack service and has to be sorted out. And if they're doing some memory obfuscation because they're putting it around, I may know where a token is, but I may not know what that token belongs to. It's something that has to be assembled. And like I said, there's some obfuscation going on. When I open up an Electron app that runs Microsoft Teams, for example, the only thing in that Electron app is going to be Microsoft Teams. So once I know the location of the auth token, I'm able to extract it. So yes, this is a security fallout, but it's also a little bit of clickbait because once someone has a local access to the computer, you have to assume they're going to gain to whatever privileges that user has, whatever sites that user's logged into. So while it's kind of clickbait, it's also kind of just eye-opening. And that's why I did it this way. And we'll leave those links down below so you can kind of poke around. And this is how security research starts. And maybe another one of you will go, I was curious how this worked. I got to play with Process Explorer. Now I have a better understanding of it. And it'll send you down the rabbit hole of starting to understand the complexities of security, the complexities of these topics, and maybe give you a better understanding of them. So links to things I talked about down below, the Bleepy Computer article gives you a lot to think about. The playing with what's in the browser and what's in the memory. A lot to think about. And by the way, keep playing with things like Process Explorer and start pivoting out and figuring out what is stored where for which process and which memory, because I just think it's a great learning experience. Thank you for watching and uh, join me in the forums for to say hi, say hi on Twitter. Call me out every time I do this. And thanks to Marcus for kind of inspiring this a little bit. Uh, follow him on Twitter. He's a smart guy. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.